The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for join, joining us today, um, to, to, uh, as well as with the Optimist team to do a walkthrough of the Meaningful Day data collection tool. My name is Robert White. I'm the Director of Administrative Services for the Developmental Disabilities Administration. I'm also joined here today by Jennifer uh, McElvain, who is the co-chair of the RAG committee. Um, and, you know, we want to thank you uh, on behalf of MDH and uh, Deputy Secretary Simons for, for, you know, spending the afternoon with us as we um, demonstrate this very important tool. Um, with me today from Optimus, I have Leslie Lee and Chris Welch. And uh, Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you to provide a little bit of background. Sure. Uh, is everyone able to hear me okay? Are you guys able to hear um, me? Yes. Yes. Okay. We hear you loud and clear. All right. Perfect. Um, so. Uh, Yes, uh, we have a few from our team. I know uh, Ainsley had prepared to, um, you know, give this presentation. Uh, we were dealing with some technical issues, so I just wanted to provide a little bit of background. Uh, and then ideally, if we've got Ainsley on, we can start moving forward with that. Um, otherwise, we'll just kind of, uh, we'll take it um, as we need to. So uh, this tool um, is something that we are sharing. The intent here is to collect some information. Um, there are, uh, updates um, that are kind of always being considered to the, the rates for the uh, DDA services. Um, so there, as a part of the uh, rate advisory group, um, you know, there was some interest in looking at uh, specifically um, rates related to meaningful day. A couple of these uh, sections are um, tailored to try to collect information that may be relevant uh, in making adjustments to those rates. So the intent here is really to collect information and data from uh, providers so that we can get a, our best picture possible given the data that we have available to try to make sure our rates are consistent with the, uh, the data, what the data are telling us. Um, so that's really kind of the genesis of this. Uh, and I'm just gonna pause for a second here um, and check on that tech issue. Uh, and see if Ainsley is able to uh, join and speak at the moment. Hi, Chris. I'm on. Is everyone able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thanks. Wonderful. Um, I'll hop right into it then. Um, so you'll notice that we're on the instructions tab here. I'll be walking through primarily um, some details behind what is laid out in this instructions tab. Um, so at a high level view, you'll notice that the tabs are broken out into three dark blue tabs. So for day habilitation, CDS and employment services, and then another for all meaningful day combined and then an additional comments tab. So um, the three different tabs uh, for day hab, CDS and employment services are identical in structure. Um, as the instructions indicate, any data that you provide should be included in the yellow highlighted cells um, throughout the file. So I'll have you navigate to the day hab tab, please. Thank you. Um, so as I mentioned, this tab along with the CDS and employment services tabs are identical in structure. Um, in the event that you aren't able to provide data by a service breakout between day hab, CDS and employment services, you can provide summary information in that all meaningful day combined tab. Um, otherwise, if you can provide it broken out into the three services, those will all aggregate and sum to what is in the all meaningful day combined tab. So now looking more specifically at this day hub tab, you'll notice that there are two tables on the left in dark blue and two on the right in light blue. The two in dark blue on the left are identical to the two in light blue on the right. The only difference is that the left corresponds to actual experience while the right tables correspond to projections. So um, the first set of tables in dark blue, um, by actual experience, we are looking for data from the July to December of 2019 period. Um, in the event that data cannot be provided for that time period, um, we ask that you provide the most relevant time period of data. And then in the additional comment section, provide us some context as to 
what that alternative time period is, why it was chosen, and any other context we should know behind that data. Um, the projections, on the other hand, are going to be um, in the within the new rate structure, and it's what you think is likely to occur um, under normal circumstances. So the actual experience on the left should have no adjustments made for what is usual or expected, and that should instead be indicated on the projection side. Um, looking more specifically at the top left now, um, we are asking for data on staffing ratios. Um, so the numbers one and two are asking about the individuals, and numbers three and four are asking about the staff. Um, we're asking for the total numbers of individuals and then staff providing those day hub services. And then in numbers two and four, we're asking for the number of those individuals or staff in the situations where at least one staff per individual is required. Um, you'll notice that for the staffing ratio piece, we're looking for Monday through Friday. So um, what you would um, expect, like the most representative week of your actual experience during this time period is what we're looking for on this Monday through Friday scale. Um, in the event that no changes in staffing ratios occur by day throughout the week, um, you can provide a summary instead in just the Friday column. Looking down to the transportation table below, um, similar in structure, except we are asking for months, so from July to December of 2019. Similarly, if your data cannot be broken out by month, we ask that you provide a more aggregate summarized data in the December of 2019 column. Looking more specifically at the transportation data, um, numbers one through four are looking at the hours for DSPs, for direct support professionals. Number one, asking for billable hours. Number two, asking for the transportation specific, which are non-billable hours. And then the third, asking for all other non-billable hours. So then one, two, and three will sum up to get number four. Um, five, six, and seven are looking at the transportation costs relative to the wages. So we're asking for the non-wage transportation costs in number five, the total meaningful day DSP wages in six, and then at seven, we arrive at that percentage. As I mentioned before, the two tables on the right are identical to the ones on the left, just instead of actual experience, they are for projections. Um, I'm not going to go through the CDS and employment services tabs in detail because they are identical to what I just walked through on the day hub tab. Um, could you navigate to the additional comments tab really quickly? Um, this tab here is for us to get any context that you think would be necessary as we review your data that you've provided. Um, so if you had to provide more aggregated data than what was requested, say, by week or by month, if there's any context there, we would love to have that included in the comments. Also, um, for the projection period in general, so those two tables on the right for each of the tabs, um, we would love more context to be provided about what assumptions were made and why those assumptions were made um, for the projections that you are reporting. Um, and the additional comments on the bottom, or is any other additional context that you think may be helpful? Um, recognizing that that was a, a pretty quick walkthrough, um, Chris and Leslie, is there anything that I missed that we'd like to touch on? Yeah, thanks, Ainsley. This is Chris, uh, Chris Welch from Optimus again. Um, so just for some context there, again, you know, the intent here is not to develop rates um, just kind of in a black box. The intent is to get information from providers and try to make sure that those rates map appropriately to the providers. So we really appreciate any help and information you can provide in this. Uh, that's the intent there is, you know, to use that information that providers are actually experiencing and what they think is likely to happen to help uh, in development of those rates. So again, just wanted to say thanks to everyone. We understand that there are some difficulties uh, for individual providers for various reasons that data may not have been collected or available or recorded in this specific way. Uh, and so, uh, you know, again, to Ainsley's point, we're looking for any information you can give us. Ideally, uh, if it's available, we'd like to use the information as we have it laid out. Um, if that's not possible, uh, you know, please try to provide as close as possible as you are able uh, within a reasonable time frame. Um, and just provide those comments uh, as to what may be different there. Um, so I think that's all I had, um, but yeah, you know, we want to make sure that we have time here to uh, have questions and some discussion um, as people see fit. Uh, 
Great, thank you, uh, Chris and team. Uh, we do have uh, several questions coming in. Uh, and just for the folks who are here, if we do run out of time and do not get to your question, uh, we, we will develop an FAQ document that we will make available. Uh, so, uh, first question, Chris. Um, uh, someone is seeking clarification uh, regarding uh, total DSV transportation, uh, non-billable hours. I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Um, it, it's not really a question. I, I believe they're, they're asking for clarification around the total DSC transportation non-billable hours. Sure, yeah, so the, the intent there, and we understand this is, uh, you know, again, different information for different providers, uh, but the intent there is to um, account for any time that staff needed to spend uh, on the clock, so to speak, where they weren't able to uh, be, you know, delivering a service uh, at that time, uh, not really a billable hour or a billable amount of time uh, that they, you know, were spending uh, doing some transportation as part of the program. Um, and again, we know there's there's a lot of uh, ways that that can be kind of used or collected, and, and that may be a little bit difficult. But we're just that's kind of the general idea there. We're trying to collect that uh, or as close to that as we can. Okay, and just just a follow up. Should that be based on the legacy system or the new definition? Uh, and when I refer to the legacy legacy system, they're referring to CCIS too. Yes, I think the uh, the intent there is to capture everything as it existed at the time. Um, so anything on the left, as Ainsley described, as dark blue, uh, we want to have actual data to the best of our ability. Um, when there are things that uh, you believe may need to be adjusted or you'd like to provide updates for, um, that's where we'd use those, those sections on the right with the light blue. Uh, and you can tell us, um, you know, in the left we used PCIS2 or that legacy system, and in the right we're using uh, more forward-looking um, definitions. Thank you for that. Um, what is the difference between common experience and actual experience? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think we use the term common experience um, for those uh, weekly uh, looks. And so we understand that, you know, any given week of service may be different to, from another week of service. Um, we are trying to get a, a feel for a picture of what service tended to look like. Uh, and so that's something where, um, you know, if you're looking at December, you know, maybe around Christmas time looks very different from the middle of October, that kind of thing. Uh, so we wanted to have a picture of what things generally looked like uh, for you as a provider um, was that common experience. Uh, for the actual experience, we use that in the monthly um, kind of hours and dollars. Uh, we were thinking that they, it, that's something that may be able to be provided at that level. Uh, by month or ideally, um, you know, rolled up uh, as a, a six-month period. Um, but that information, uh, you know, again, everyone has kind of differences on how they collect that information. Uh, some of the feedback that we heard from some of the providers that we talked to about this uh, was that it, collecting information around uh, staffing and individuals being served uh, is probably more likely to um, you know, be developed on a kind of schedule or uh, be available on a schedule rather than kind of looking at an overall time period. Uh, so that is really the intent there is to try to, to get the best picture of what things generally look like for you uh, when we have that common experience. Okay, uh, there's a question related to, to one to one. Um, are the number of people needing one to one supposed to be duplicated in the total count? Yeah, that's a great question. So on lines one uh, and two, we're asking about individuals. In lines three and four, we're asking about staff. Um, so for lines two and four, we're specifically asking about one-to-one -one and two-to-one. So uh, we're expecting that those 
uh, pieces of information are included in the lines above. So uh, line number one would be inclusive of people uh, who are served in a one-to-one -one or two-to-one ratio, and line number three would be inclusive of those uh, staff who are serving individuals on a one-to-one -one or two-to-one ratio. Um, I think I also saw a question about the intent behind collecting that one-to-one -one data. Uh, there are different rates um, for different uh, kind of staff ratios. Uh, so the intent there is to try to parse out to the best of our ability, uh, you know, which uh, individuals may have been served in certain staffing ratios or what kind of costs are associated with those versus uh, you know, what the environment was like for individuals served in more of a group setting. Uh, so essentially, we've kind of net out uh, those lines two and four from the lines above one and three to get a picture of what things look like more in a group setting. Okay, great. Um, next question, how should general organizational transportation costs like fuel, leases, uh, depreciation, et cetera, be allocated to different programs for non-wage transportation costs? Or is that to, to be left up to each provider as to how to allocate that? Or is that, yeah, I so, mean, is that the intention? Sure, yeah, that, I think that's a, that's a very good question as well. Um, we understand uh, that providers collect and have information available in different ways um, from what we've seen from general ledgers and cost reports. So um, we understand that there's some difficulties in trying to get to, you know, all these different kind of breakouts and details. So we've asked for kind of a more general look at things. So with regard to if you have uh, any of those non-wage transportation costs um, that are uh, for, let's say, day habilitation and CDS and employee, employee services, employment services, uh, you know, if you have that information available by which service, um, you know, that's what we'd appreciate. Um, if you're trying to say, well, we spent this much on, uh, you know, those transportation costs, but what percentage of it was, you know, CDS versus employment services, um, I think we would ask you to, to allocate to the best of your ability what you think uh, is appropriate for that. Um, so I would probably lean on, you know, the amount of um, time or uh, the amount of services that you provided um, so if you, you know, 80% of your business is day habilitation, for example, then we would probably expect about 80% of your costs would be in, in uh, those transportation costs. Um, conversely, if you are spending more time, uh, you know, with transportation for one service uh, compared to another for the same amount of time, um, then, you know, the intent there would be to kind of split it uh, as, to the best of your ability. Um, what we've used this in the past for is doing things at all meaningful day combined. So um, that is at, uh, at the moment the intent looking forward, in which case that allocation, um, if it's not you know, entirely consistent by provider, probably won't be as important. Uh, but to the extent that there is a, a wide variety of, of cost uh, distributions there, that's where we may start to look uh, by service. But again, uh, we've used this for in the past, all meaningful day combined. Uh, so we'd ask you to just allocate to the best of your ability um, and, uh, and we'll look at you know, the aggregate level um, as our primary base there. Okay. Um, can one use the hours of a route driver uh, if they are transporting in lieu of a DST? Um, yes, I think that's probably reasonable to do so. Uh, I, I think, yeah, um, the intent there would be, you know, the, the transportation time that was spent. We did put that DSP language in there thinking that that was you know, maybe more likely, but if you have, a, you know, specific transportation staff, that's helpful information as well. Um, or if you have someone else providing that, um, you know, provi providing that, you know, opportunity uh, in lieu of a DSP, um, that would be helpful information as well. So, yes, you could use that. Okay, th thank you for, for that, Chris. We also got a request that some, some folks 
uh, may not be able to hear you as clearly or, or loudly. Um, next question. Um, uh, speaking of PCIS 2, in which they build for the day, um, transportation was not split out as non-billable, and they're kind of seeking some guidance on how they should try to figure that out. And they also noted that their DSV did transportation. I'm sorry, could you repeat that one more time? And this individual is trying to figure out how to split transportation out as non billable uh, when in PCIS 2 it was built by, uh, it was built for the entire day. Yeah. Um, if so we need more clarity. I can ask this individual to to provide that. Uh, I think that that's a, a very good question. Uh, we understand the rate structure has changed. Uh, so what we kind of intended uh, the meaning for that service uh, billable time in uh, line one of the transportation data section. Uh, the intent there is the service time delivering, uh, you know day habilitation or CDS or employment service services. Um, any transportation time, uh, even if it was, uh, you know, billable as a day, you know, a, a piece of transportation, we would want to look at those transportation hours um, in, in line number two there. Thanks, Chris. We have several questions regarding um, transportation. Um, and the question is, if it's outsourced to another company, how would they report it? Um, and if it's outsourced, would they skip numbers one through four of the tool? Yeah, um, so I think that's helpful. Uh, again, the, the intent here is to collect uh, provider experience. So if you are outsourcing that information, we would want to, um, you know, collect that information, that that's what providers are experiencing, that, you know, you're paying for a service, for example. Um, we understand, you know, if that's a third party thing, you may not have uh, this level of detail or this level of information. Uh, so we just ask that you do populate that, whether or not you are outsourcing that, um, those costs, uh, to another provider, um, we'd ask either way that you populate this information to the best of your ability. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. We've got two questions that are somewhat related to each other. Um, so one is, you know, they're stating, you know, whether or not we're looking for total number of staff employed for July through December or the total on any given week? Yeah, I think that's a very good question as well. Uh, so with that idea of the common experience, um, let's say you had one DSP for one week and then a different week you had another DSP. Uh, on any given week, you would only have had one of those DSPs. Uh, and so that's really the kind of information we're trying to collect not how many uh, people you had in total, but what the, the common experience was where you usually had one DSP or usually had five DSPs working, uh, whether or not it was, um, you know, they stayed for the entire six months. Great, thank you. Um, what are your suggestions and how they can break down the DSP's hours for billable and non-billable if they did, in fact, outsource transportation. Yeah, uh, that's one of the things we're trying to account for. So uh, we know that the, these data points may not be things that are easily or readily available to each provider, that each provider kind of keeps track of information or provides services in different ways. So we're asking kind of a general look here. Um, and so, you know, what we're asking really uh, is not for any specific 
set of instructions that are appropriate for every single provider, but uh, kind of a, a general picture there. So again, the idea would be um, if data are available, we'd ask you to populate it um, to the level of detail that you are able. Uh, if you are only able to provide a summary level of data, um, you know, that's helpful as well. Mm -hmm. And if these are not data points which you are able to provide, um, you know, that, that's okay as well. And you're welcome to only fill out the right-hand side if you only are able to make projections or estimations about what things may look like in the future. Um, we're, we're trying to collect as much data as we can at as detailed level as we can. And then, you know, based on how much information and what kind of information we collect, then we'll be able to use uh, that information accordingly. So if we can only work with projections, that's what we'll do. If we can only work with summarized data, that's kind of what we'll do. Uh, but yeah, as far as specifics for each provider, it's uh, got to just kind of be to the best of your ability, um, you know, within a reasonable time frame. We're not asking you to be spending a whole lot of hours on this just to, you know, give us a general summary in uh, it, with what you're able to do. Great, thank you, Chris. Um, someone seeking clarity for the projection and whether we are asking for the total number of staff or asking for the number of staff they would require to provide the service. Uh, yeah, so again, um, that's something that's really going to be up to the providers. Uh, so one of the ways that we're looking to leverage that projected information is we want to try to understand, uh, you know, both what things look like in the past and how they may look different in the future. So there's two ways that we'll look at that, quantitatively and qualitatively. So quantitatively, we're looking at, um, you know, how how much time or how much money you spent on things like transportation or what kind of staffing ratios you actually experienced and forward looking how that's going to be different so that the rates, if they are based on actual experience, actual data, but things are likely to change, we're able to calculate what kind of a difference uh, it is from that base experience to the projection. Also qualitatively, we're trying to see, you know, are there going to be more or less of uh, services provided in a certain way, or would they have different cost patterns? What kind of things are providers experiencing and expecting so that we can ask those questions? Hey, in the past, we were doing all of our transportation internally, but looking forward, we're going to be, uh, you know, outsourcing that to a third party. If we're seeing those kind of comments often, in uh, this data template, then we can start to understand, okay, maybe we should adjust that data point. And, you know, we might not have the specific number based on the information that's provided, but we can ask that question, how do we adjust for this and try to make sure that we're uh, getting to the, the right spot there. Uh, so for those projections, we're really asking for providers to have some independence and leeway to provide to the best of their ability, what they think their business will look like. And then again, on the additional comments tab to provide uh, any notes or comments about things that they had taken into account for those projections so that we can make sure the rates take those same things into account accordingly. Thank you for that, Chris. Um, another question, uh, with the amount of money a provider paid to a third party for non-wage transportation costs, Go in line number five. I'm sorry, could you repeat that question one more time? Sure. Uh, would the amount of money a provider paid to a third party go in line number five uh, for non-wage transportation costs? Um, I think ideally, if, it, if information is available to look at the difference between time and, uh, and cost um, and break those out, then we would ask that information be populated in both lines two and five at that level of detail. But again, if that information is not available and you only have 
you know, we paid X amount for transportation, then I think that's reasonable. We just ask you to populate it um, in whatever cell is the most uh, appropriate for what you have there. So line five looks like it would be a good option. Um, and I, I just uh, internally, we've been uh, talking through this. We want to make sure um, one of the things that we didn't necessarily go into too much detail is the sections that are in yellow, the cells that are in that light yellow, we're asking that those cells only have numeric information, so only numbers on all of the blue tabs. Um, any comments that you have, any text, any things that you want to write in, we'd ask that you populate that uh, in the additional comments tab by itself. So we're looking only for information in those yellow cells, uh, numbers in those first four tabs there, and then any, um, any comments, any notes there, we'd ask in that last additional comments tab. Okay, thank you for that, Chris. Um, we do have a, a few more minutes left. If, if folks have other questions, and there are some questions um, regarding policy, which we will, you know, take back and answer online and update the FAQs with, with those answers. Um, and a, a lot of great questions, a lot of uh, similar questions, um, and I think we've gotten through most of them. So we'll give folks a few more minutes to ask any uh, additional questions they may have that we have not already answered. Yeah, again, um, just want to, while we have a second, reiterate some of those guiding principles. The ex intent is to collect information uh, as you're able to provide it. Um, we want to make sure that the rates are reflective of the actual experience of providers and met any changes that may uh, take place uh, from the actual experience so that we're mapping those rates to the experience of providers in a reasonable way. And we understand this is a request that, uh, you know, there's a whole busy time of the year with uh, fiscal year information. And, you know, this is something that uh, you guys are doing um, and offering as uh, a benefit um, to us, so we really appreciate any information that you're able to provide. Uh, it's really helpful to us, um, and ideally, you know, that will help us better map these rates so that they can be more consistent uh, with the uh, level of revenue needed for um, all of you uh, for the appropriate services. Thanks, Chris. Um, next question, um, DSP hours are not billable, do you mean billable client services hours? Uh, for example, if one staff provides services to a group of four individuals for one hour, do we count one staff hour or four billable service, uh, I'm sorry, service hours? And is it billable hours under the legacy system daily rate or under the new meaningful day definition uh, for 15 minute units? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we have, um, I think, the intent on the left-hand side with the dark blue experience is to be based on that actual experience as it happened at the time, and then anything on the uh, that you're expecting to, you know, be forward-looking, uh, whether or not it's materially materialized yet, we'd be looking for that more on that right-hand projection, light blue side. Um, with regards to the billable, non-billable hours thing, uh, we are really looking for how do DSPs or how do your staff spend their time? So if they are providing a specific service like day habilitation, uh, whether or not this might fit the specific definition of any service, um, what we're looking for is if they're spending, let's say, six hours of their day doing day habilitation, then in that uh, kind of line one there, or we have uh, for the transportation data, we'd be looking for those six hours. If they're spending two hours of their day doing transportation, then we'd want that two hours there. And then if they're spending, you know, if we're already at eight hours, but let's say they're spending another hour a day on various administrative and other things, then we'd want that one hour there. Uh, so we'd be looking at, you know, a total picture of what it looks like for your staff and how they're allocating their time between those three things. 
So with that in mind, if you have one staff providing an hour of service uh, simultaneously to four individuals, it's just one hour of that staff member's time, and that's really the one hour that we're looking for, not uh, any sort of multiplication or amount by uh, individuals served. It's really just what does the staff member's time look like? Okay. Um, what type of activities, um, an example such as therapy, medical appointments, and counseling sessions, uh, should be excluded from billable hours and included in the other non-billable hours, if, if any? Um, yeah, that, that's a good question. I don't know that we have a specific definition there. Um, what I think we'd like to do is try to align it with this specific service being provided. Uh, so um, you have to forgive me if I, if I misunderstand here, uh, but for the day habilitation tab, for example, we would only uh, be talking about that day habilitation um, service. Uh, so if that may be you know, easier to define or understand on the 15 minute versus daily um, uh, rate, um, then we'd be looking kind of more the definition under the 15 minute where it's that specific day habilitation is being provided um, that you could bill for. Uh, if it's another service that uh, a client needs, um, we'd ask that to be put in non-billable hours. And with that, you know, I, I understand that's not an exact definition. Uh, that's again, we're, we're asking for the best information that we have available, and we know that every provider is different. So we're asking you to just um, try to populate that to the best of your ability. If you have any concerns or thoughts around how that information may be used or interpreted. That kind of information is uh, very much welcome, and we would appreciate that in the comments section. So if you have, for example, that you know you have 50% uh, of your time you put in non-billable, and then in your comments you say, well, 25% of the time uh, was for therapy, medical appointments, counseling sessions, and the other 25%, you know, that kind of thing, we wanted to, um, to the best of our ability, try to split that out uh, based on the level of information you're able to provide. Thanks, Chris. Um, for agencies who have in-house mechanics, uh, where, where would the, those costs go? Would they go into line number five? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think, uh, so our intent here in the first three lines of the transportation data section is to calculate how your staff are, are providing their time. And the uh, rows five and six are meant to capture uh, costs that you can't necessarily quantify with time. Uh, so if you didn't have an in-house mechanic, in theory, you would just be, um, you know, taking your, or bringing your vehicles to a mechanic shop there. Uh, and so that is the kind of thing that wouldn't necessarily uh, be how your staff is spending their time, but what kind of costs you're incurring. Uh, so I would probably put that in that non-wage transportation cost. Um, you know, as we, we uh, I think you mentioned in line five there. Um, so yeah, the intent there really is to see how does your staff, uh, primarily your DSPs, how are they spending their time in sections or in lines one through four, and then any other costs uh, related to that um, in line five. Great, thank you, Chris. Are there any other questions? And again, um, for the policy related questions, we will um, answer those offline and, and get back to you. Okay. Um, not seeing any um, additional questions, Chris. Um, any closing remarks from, from you and the rest of the Optimus team? Uh, it looked like we might have just had some pop up at the last second yeah. here. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, yep. I see one yep. saying, uh, if staff, does staff only apply to DSP staff or also other staff, case managers, program managers, maintenance directors, nurses, et cetera, not providing direct support? Uh, so this is going to be a little bit um, at your judgment and discretion in how your staff operate your specific program. Uh, but let's talk about intent here. So we do have a section in the rates uh, that is specific to general and administrative costs. So if you have any of your administrative staff, we wouldn't necessarily want those included in this DSP kind of look. If you have staff that support the needs of the clients, but are not directly related to the service being provided, for example, if you're providing day habilitation and some of your clients have medical needs uh, that you have a nurse for, um, then we would put that in a separate bucket. We call that program support. Uh, and so it's not really how your staff uh, that are providing those, directly providing those uh, services, uh, it's not really how they're spending their time, but it is a cost that's accounted for in a different section of the rates. So we're really looking for uh, DSP as close as you can get. We understand there's some level of supervision there where some uh, staff may do some services and some transportation and, and other things. Uh, so we're just trying to get the best picture as you're able to split it, um, really primarily focused on DSPs. If, again, if you have other staff that aren't really directly providing those services but are supporting, uh, we're accounting for those in different sections. So those would not be included. Thanks, Chris. Um, should drivers be included in DSP uh, in the DSP wages section? Um, yes, I think that's uh, how we would uh, interpret it. It's, we're trying to get um, for those wages. Uh, we'd be looking at how much you're spending for your DSPs, um, inclusive of kind of things related to transportation, if that makes sense. So if you didn't have a, a dedicated transportation staff, then your DSP would be providing that uh, in theory. So um, we would want to include that as part of the wages. Thank you. Um, is the deadline for the tool submission still July 15th? Uh, yeah, the deadline is still July 15th. Um, we are recording this session and we will uh, make it available uh, on the DDA website uh, tomorrow. Uh, for supported employment, uh, under the legacy system, billable time includes time that potentially a DSB was not with them at work. Is this time is this the time that would be counted under DSP billable hours? Uh, yeah, that's a, a good question. Uh, you guys are throwing a lot of good questions out here. I know um, this isn't always a perfect cookie cutter and I appreciate you guys uh, working through kind of all the details with us. So um, the intent there uh, is to look at how things were experienced in the past. So if you had billable time, uh, in the past, we would ask you to populate that as billable time in the past, uh, whether or not um, they were with them at work, that kind of thing. So uh, we'd just be looking uh, to the best of your ability to populate the past experience with your actual experience at that time. Thank you. Um, and, and let's see here. So there's two similar questions. Um, one is related to the use of third party temps and whether or not um, that um, information should be included in DSP wages. The other is, is regarding uh, when supervisors provide coverage of DSP, uh, for example, when they are short staff, should their wages be included? Yeah, um, so I think uh, the idea there uh, is to try to collect collect um, as close to the DSP kind of experience as possible. So if you do have a third party temp filling in for a DSP uh, and you were paying wages for that, then we would probably, uh, we would want to include that. 
similarly, if your supervisors are stepping in uh, when you're short-staffed or uh, whatever the situation, if possible, uh, we'd want to collect that experience for that time that they were providing that, um, you know, that they were doing, taking care of those responsibilities. Uh, again, you know, we didn't want to kind of split the atom and ask for all these details for every provider because we understand that's difficult uh, for many providers to populate. So to the best of your ability, we'd want to, uh, yes, count those third-party temps um, if they are providing that DSP service and any of the time that um, just the time that supervisors are providing that kind of DSP experience, uh, we'd want to include just that set of time uh, from their wages if possible. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, any other questions? We still have five minutes left. We want to make sure we get full use of this time and uh, answer all of your questions. Um, in, in, in the interim, while we're waiting, uh, I'll let you know that we will be scheduling uh, kind of a drop-in session uh, for one day next week, so we'll send out more information about that in the coming days. This will give folks the opportunity to kind of drop in during the lunch hour uh, if you get any last minute questions answered. Um, and then we'll also look into uh, the, the following week prior to, to the due date for the tool as well. We want to be able to support you as much as we can in getting uh, the collection data tool filled out and, and submitted. Yeah, again, I uh, just wanted to reiterate one more time, you know, we're trying to do the, our best uh, to develop those rates so that they're appropriate for the services being provided. Um, and when we are able to use information from the providers, it's super helpful, it makes everything uh, more accurate, more reliable, um, and we're able to, you know, best fit that rate to the cost of the service. So we really do appreciate, I know uh, there's not a super long timeline here of what we're asking for, and this might not have been something you were expecting to get you know, uh, dropped in your lap, but we really appreciate any information that you're able to provide. Uh, if you aren't able to provide anything at this level of detail, but you have um, other information that you think may be useful uh, relative to this, um, you know, that information is welcome as well in the comments section. Uh, so just really appreciative, again, uh, of all the information you're able to share with us. Thanks. Okay, one last call for questions before we conclude. <laughs> not seeing any thank you all um for spending an hour of your afternoon with us um chris has articulated how important this is to the process um we also appreciate your time we know you're very busy um you know doing the day-to-day -day work of your agency and so um we want to thank you and um be on the lookout for any uh, regarding the other two sessions have a good afternoon everyone